Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Quelap Fortress Quelap is a lost fortified city sitting atop a mountain in northern Peru. It's rivaled only by Machu Picchu in its grandeur, and yet some say it was even more impressive in its prime. This city sits 9,000 feet above sea level at the peak of a mountain. It overlooks vast valleys, rolling green hills, and cloud forests as far as the eye can see. The total area of this city is about 15 hectares. It's riddled with the ruins of civil buildings, religious temples, military structures, and so much more. Most of these structures have been reduced to crumbling stone foundations, but in its heyday, it was like a place straight out of a fairy tale. Archaeologists have uncovered over 420 circular stone dwellings, suggesting a true metropolis in the clouds. The main citadel had walls over 60 feet tall in some places, truly making it a castle in the sky. The city of Quelap was the political center for the Chachapoya civilization. This was a mysterious culture that flourished around the year 900 AD. It prospered for five centuries and then was wiped out in the 16th century thanks to the Spanish invasion of South America. There were at least 300,000 people living in the mountain city during its peak. But after the Spanish annihilated the Chachapoya cloud warriors, the city was abandoned and left to the elements. Number 9. Mount of Temptation The Mount of Temptation is a mountain overlooking the ancient city of Jericho in Palestine. It has religious significance going back to the earliest days of Christianity. The mountain is considered a holy place. Near its peak is a Greek Orthodox monastery at almost 1,000 feet above sea level. It's called the Monastery of the Temptation, and it was built on the side of the cliff with an impressive vantage of both Jericho and the Jordan Valley. The oldest part of the structure dates back to the 6th century AD. To visit is like teleporting into a story from the New Testament. But why is the Mount of Temptation so important? Christians believe it to be the spot where Jesus was tempted by the devil to turn from his own father, God Almighty. As told in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it was from this peak of the mountain that Satan tempted Jesus with ultimate power. Satan gave Jesus the option to rule over all the kingdoms of the world. After Jesus was given this temptation, he spent 40 days and 40 nights fasting in a cave. The mystical monastery of the temptation is supposedly built above that very cave. The two main churches were built by the Crusaders about 1,000 years ago. They constructed one within a cave about halfway up the cliff face. But then, almost 900 years later, in 1874, the land was purchased by the Orthodox Church. They were the ones who made the more modern monastery around the original cave chapel, the one marking the stone where Jesus sat totally still for 40 days. Number 8. Misfat al-Abrin The mysterious mud village of Misfat al-Abrin in Oman is a mysterious and mystical place. It's positioned within the Hajar Mountains, somewhere that even today feels kind of prehistoric. There are very few people living in the region. The valleys are filled with palm trees, and red cliffs and rocky plateaus fill the skyline. It's here, in the shadow of the Jebel Shams and beyond the winding valley known as Oman's Grand Canyon, that an abandoned community hides in the dark rocks and deep crags. Misfat al-Abrin was built about 300 years ago as an oasis town. Its first inhabitants were members of the Omani al-Abri tribe. They built their grand city against the face of a cliff, turning a relatively barren landscape into a Babylonian utopia. The tribe's people were smart enough to direct water from the oasis through their city using a complex irrigation system. The system involved building stone canals through the mountain, creating a lush paradise in an otherwise dead and ugly desert. They had beautiful blue pools outside their mud houses, terraces lush with desert vegetation and chirping birds. The whole village was full of mango trees, banana trees, pomegranates, papayas, oranges, and dates. Misfat al-Abrin was something straight out of an Arabian fairy tale. Sadly, it was abandoned recently in favor of more modern houses closer to the big city. Today, the oasis village is little more than a remote tourist attraction. Number 7. Sigirilla Sigirilla is an ancient city in Sri Lanka built on the top of a huge rock column. Also known as Lion Rock, this city stands 590 feet above the ground and has been there for over 1,500 years. 
It was King Kashiapa who chose the top of the rock as the location for his mighty palace fortress during his rule between 477 and 495 AD. It was a jungle sanctuary so high above the forest that the king believed it impossible to conquer. Unfortunately for King Kashiapa, his city in the sky wasn't that difficult to take. His half-brother, Mogalana, showed up with an army from India intent on retaking the throne, which his brother had stolen after murdering their father. In 495, Kashiapa's army abandoned him in the middle of the battle and he fell on his own sword and died. The city of Sigiriya was then abandoned. The capital was moved to Anuradhapura, and Sigiriya was converted into a Buddhist monastery. The monastery survived another 1,000 years before it vanished from the history books and was forgotten. It wasn't until Jonathan Forbes of the British Army rediscovered the place in 1831 that Sigiriya was brought back into public view. It must have been an amazing thing to uncover for Jonathan and his team. The only way to reach the city is by scaling the side of the mountain and then passing through a mighty gateway built in the shape of a lion. The lion gate alone was like something out of a fairy tale, a huge stone beast whose legs you must pass under to reach the city above. Sadly, only one of its paws is left today. And now for number six. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Hellcat Jeep Liz Fernier and Vikram Achaira. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family. We'd love to have you. Number six, Balancanche Sacred Cave. Balancanche is a sacred Maya cave located near the jungle city of Chichen Itza. It was first discovered in 1905 by curious explorers who hacked their way through the ferocious vegetation just to reach its entrance. It wasn't until 1959, though, that archaeologists uncovered a series of hidden passages within the subterranean sanctuary. That was when they realized just how important this particular cave was to the Maya. The cave and its passages were dedicated to Chak, the god of rain. He was one of the most important deities in Maya mythology, recognized as the bringer of life. Chak was so important that the Maya used the cave for centuries as a place to offer him sacrifices. Balancanche is currently one of the most important underground archaeological sites in the world. The cave goes on for over 1.2 miles and descends 32 feet into an underground nightmare. This is a place straight out of a dark Mesoamerican fairy tale, somewhere the Maya really did associate with the underworld and life beyond death. This cave and others like it were often seen as entrances into the realm of the dead, much like Hades in Greek mythology. Number 5. Mont Saint-Michel Mont Saint-Michel in France is without a doubt the most fairy tale esque place in existence today. It's the most visited destination in France besides Paris. And to be honest, it's not hard to see why. Mont Saint-Michel is a medieval abbey built on an island, constructed atop a pyramid of granite and lording over a small village of medieval abodes along the island's shores. There's just nothing quite like it anywhere else on the planet. Mont Saint-Michel covers a small area of only about 7 hectares. Construction on the island began in 708 AD, when a sanctuary was established dedicated to the archangel Saint Michel. A larger chapel was built in the 10th century AD. About 300 years later, construction began on the Benedictine Abbey which still stands. There were several modifications and restorations done up until the 19th century, but what you see today is mostly original. The fortifications around the island, which have turned it into a variable fortress, were built in the 14th century to protect the abbey and its medieval village from the English. Number 4. Himeji Castle Himeji Castle in Japan is the Japanese equivalent of Bavaria's Neuschwanstein Castle, or aka the inspiration for the famous Disney Castle. It was built on a hilltop from between 1581 and 1609, and it's still standing strong today. Its main tower in the center is six stories tall, with sweeping tiled rooftops where you can imagine ninjas running barefoot in the night. The complex is wholly impressive, with a double moat, tall defensive walls to keep those pesky ninjas out, and the whole structure painted eloquently in shades of white and gray. It was the famous military leader Toyotomi Hideyoshi who was behind the original construction of Hijemi Castle. 
He ruled Japan between 1537 and 1598 and was one of the most important leaders in Japanese history. He helped unify the nation in the 16th century, reorganizing the class system, creating tax reforms, restoring old temples, invading Korea, and building fairy tale castles across Japan. His reforms would last in Japan until the modern age. One of the coolest parts about the castle is its defensive strategy. The interior is made up of 83 buildings surrounding the central castle keep. These buildings were designed in the fashion of a labyrinth to mislead potential invaders. The purpose here was that if the castle was breached, those invading would get so confused by the maze that they'd never make it to the central keep. Then, as the invaders tried to blunder their way through the dizzying mess of buildings and hallways, counterattacks could be launched by soldiers who knew exactly how to navigate the labyrinth. Number 3. Roman Watchtower in Morocco, archaeologists revealed an old Roman watchtower near the mysterious ancient city of Volubilis. When the watchtower was originally built, it was positioned along the southern border of the Roman province of Maritania Tingitana. The site was occupied by the Roman army at the very outskirts of their empire. Researchers believe the Romans controlled the area between the 1st and 3rd centuries AD. And while there isn't anything left except the Watcher's stone foundations, this was once a truly spectacular site. 2,000 years ago, the Watchtower was an impressive fortification standing at the edge of a cliff overlooking the sprawling lands below. It was likely used by the army to control the flow of people and goods through their border. It wasn't a marvelous castle or an old fairy tale village, but it was a faraway outpost at the fringe of Roman territory. The tower was built near the edge of the desert in a place that would have shared very little culturally with the Romans. To cross the border here would have been to stray into unknown lands far beyond the reach of Roman control. To be stationed here as a soldier born in Rome would have been like living at a military garrison at the end of the world. Number 2. Bodium Castle Bodium Castle is something straight out of legend. It looks like the exact place King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table would hold court, with Merlin doing magic up on the castle ramparts. It was built between 1380 and 1385 by a local noble named Sir Edward Dalingridge. This was an extremely rough time for the people of Britain. The Black Death arrived in the UK in 1348, leading to mass starvation, unprecedented death, and social anarchy. Then, during the second part of the 14th century, England went to war with France. It was not a good time to be a peasant, but a surprisingly fortunate time to be a noble. Sir Edward became wealthy through the war. He was promoted to Warden of London in 1392 by King Richard II, and he landed himself in the highest circle of English society. His castle is evidence of his prestige. It's one of the only castles in England still standing in almost perfect condition. It's located in East Sussex, open all year for tourists to walk around the tea room, the castle courtyard, and to explore the huge moat which surrounds the building. Access to the castle is only available by crossing a bridge to the original stone plinth. The moat is enormous, making any effort of siege seem fruitless. Attackers would have needed boats just to breach the castle walls. Number 1. Ancient Tavern Archaeologists working in southern France recently discovered what appears to be a 2,100-year-old tavern, an old drinking hall straight out of a fantasy book. It comes from the 1st century BC and could be the earliest of its kind in the western Mediterranean. This mysterious tavern was found near the ancient town of Latara and would have been in business during the Roman conquest of the area. The people of Latara were originally farmers before the Romans showed up. Then, when the Romans had secured the area, suddenly there were new jobs, and one of those jobs was a barkeep. When researchers first came upon this site, they thought they had found a really old bakery. Excavations lasted for over five years, uncovering ovens, indoor grist mills, and all the equipment necessary for baking flatbread. But it was the charcoal hearth, earthen benches, and scraps of fish bones on the kitchen floor that revealed the site was a true tavern. Just like you see in fantasy movies, locals gathered here to share drinks, sing songs, and eat all kinds of steaming fish soups. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite ancient site? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos about amazing places. See you later! Bye!